That's the quite quite maths. So looking at this picture, only two percent can solve it. This was a doozy. This question. It was in a higher maths past paper that I came across, and when I did some research on this, I found that. So we needed just thirty five percent to pass that exam this year, rather than the usual fifty percent. And this was in the paper twenty fifteen, paper two, question eight of basically higher maths. And this is not the question. But this is the picture of what was in the question, the actual main image that they gave for this question, which looks like it makes no sense. There's a crocodile, there's a zebra, opposite sides of a river. So, it was worth 10 marks, let's get in there and see what this question was actually asking us. So give yourself a minute to look over the question, see how hard or easy it is for you and try and work it out, and then we'll come back for the full solution in a second. This is a crocodile stock and play located 20 metres further upstream on the opposite side of a bank. Crocodiles travel at different speeds on land and water. The time taken for a crocodile to reach its prey is minimised if it swims to a particular point p metres upstream on the other side of the river as shown. I mean, it gives you a formula for the time taken in tenths of a second given by this. Remember, x is this horizontal distance here. Part A says calculate the time taken if a crocodile does not travel on land. It was the context of the question, I think, that made this one difficult and people couldn't quite understand what's it asking me here. Well, if it's asking me basically this, if it doesn't travel on land, it is in the water. If it's in the water, it's just swimming straight upstream at 20 metres. So part one actually is just substituting x equals 20 into this formula. So part one, t of 20 is 5 root 36 plus 20 squared plus 4 times 20 minus 20. Well, that's 0. So that's just 5 plus the square root of 36 plus 400. And that equals 5 times the square root of 436. And that is 100. And once you get your calculator out, you do the square root of 436, times it by 5, and you get 104. And just remember your units, it's tenths of a second. So that's part one done. Now let's look at part two. Calculate the time taken if a crocodile swims the shortest distance possible. Well, let's have a look at this picture again. Swims the shortest distance. Well, a straight line is going to be the shortest distance. So if he just jumps straight up here and then walks the rest of the way, he must be walking 20 metres. So that means that he spends no time in the water. Because remember, x is how far you swim basically upstream. So he's not swimmed anything upstream, he's just went straight across and he's went 20 metres on land. So in, this, in other words, x is zero. So for part two, you just have to substitute t equals zero in to the formula. So you get five times the root of 36 plus zero squared plus 44, sorry, times 20 minus zero. 5 times 6 is 30, 4 20s is 80, that gives us 110 uh, tenths of a second. Part B, although the context of the question was quite unusual, to say the least, between these two extremes is one value which minimises the time taken. If you're a higher maths pupil, you should realise that the one minimise means we're doing optimization, And that should be a big key red flag for you. Find this value of x and hence the minimum possible times. So step one, I need to get it ready to differentiate. So if we look at our t of x, we can do the thirds can come a power. So that's 36 plus x squared to the power of a half plus 80 minus 4x just by multiplying out the bracket. Now we can differentiate this using the chain rule for this part. t dash x is equal to 5 times a half, taking the power down, 36 plus x squared to the minus a half. And then we need to differentiate the 36 plus x squared because of the chain rule, so times 2x. And then we'll still have take away 4 on the end because that's 0 and that is differentiates to 4. Tidying that up, we get 5 over 2 times 2x. 
plus x squared to be minus a half, take away 4. 5 times 2 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So you've just got 5x for the first term. We could say that's over 36 plus x squared to the half, minus 4. Or that's 5x over the square root of 36 plus x squared, take away 4. Now we need to look at our station points because we're trying to minimise the time taken. So it's an optimization question. So just remember for stationary points occurs, stationary points occur when t dash x equals zero. So we've got our equation 5x over the square root of 36 plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. Okay, moving the 4 to the other side, we get 5x over the square root of 36 plus x squared equals 4. And then we can multiply through by the denominator. In other words, 5x equals 4 times the square root of 36 plus x squared. And we can square both sides to get 25x squared equals 16 times 36 plus x squared, because that's the opposite of a square root is squaring. And we can work that out. 25x squared equals 576 plus 16x squared. Moving the, the x squared over to our side, taking away 16, you get 9x squared is 576. So x squared is divided by 9, 64. So x equals 8, or x equals minus 8. But straight away, minus 8 is not valid because x has to be a positive number. x is greater than 0 or equal to. So x equals 8 is our number. So the minimum time taken occurs when x equals 8. There's no need for a nature table this one because we've already got, we know it's going to be a minimum. So minimum time when x equals 8. So we can then substitute that back into our t of x. So remember that would give us t of 8 equals 5 times the square root of 36 plus 8 squared plus 4 times 20 minus 8. And if you were to work that out using a calculator, you would get 98 tenths of a second.